Hey, what's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, before I get started, um, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, I make uh, Bible based videos. I talk about end times, I talk about uh, the whole entire Bible. I try to also put in some uh, walking free from sin messages. Um, and um, and so uh, if you were interested please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and um, also hit the like button on your favorite videos um, and you can also check out my website it's washi.com it's w-a-s-h-y-e.com um, and that just has a whole bunch of uh, different articles on there maybe some guidance life advice um, and it's not a super huge website so um, but if you're looking for some next steps in following Jesus then you can check that out um, I also recommend other websites like maybe uh, christianitytoday.com uh, or gotquestions.org um, those are some good ones for answering specific questions that you may have about the Christian faith. Um, you know, is it like Sodom and Gomorrah out there? Um, you know, I think that um, it's happening in secret. I don't think we're in Sodom and Gomorrah as far as the openness of wickedness now i have seen a few stories um out in other countries that uh has been like a public um display of evil and so let me explain a little bit about what i mean is that in sodom and gomorrah it seemed to be a open public display of wickedness and evil um, when Lot rescued uh, or re not when Lot was rescued the angels because we don't know the full story about that but when the angels rescued Lot um, the men of the city were about to do something very evil and um, it was both young and old the Bible describes and it was um something gathered it was a gathering in the in the public square but also right outside of lot's door now i don't know um you know every sin that sodom and gomorrah were involved in but uh just from what the bible describes it was um a place of just um, a lot of merchandise buying and selling um, planting and building but um, you know it seemed to be that every intent of that person's th thoughts were evil continually even though the Bible describes that for Noah's time I think in Sodom and Gomorrah you know it was probably the same thing I mean um, it seemed like everybody's thoughts were either on evil or just not focused on God you know which I guess is evil you know in a, in of itself but um, does our society parallel Sodom and Gomorrah I think it's obvious yes you know I think that you know we can still go out to the store without necessarily um, you know seeing every day some some evil thing happening you know but at the same time we do hear a lot of stories in the news about different uh situations that are happening out in public um and so i haven't seen in america w the new story that i saw that paralleled sodom and gomorrah i haven't seen that um in America yet but I have seen evidence of it in other countries um, especially with places like the Taliban um, uh, that are out there um, uh, uh, that's not a place but it's a group of people 
the Taliban um, and um, I think that they are doing a lot of evil um, a, a, a lot that is in public as well so I guess not everything that I would say about Sodom and Gomorrah was public you know but I guess when I think of Sodom and Gomorrah and when I think of the stories of uh, Noah you know it seemed to be that you can't you couldn't find someone righteous you know you couldn't find someone talking about God and I know I just went to uh, the downtown of my city and I saw someone standing outside with a sign saying repent you know uh, and talking about Jesus um, and so I know that you know there are other Christians out there that are walking right with God especially you know there's many churches out there you're you are watching this video hopefully you are right with God um, and so you know um, to me it's different for Noah because he was described as one of the only people in the whole entire world not just a city like Sodom and Gomorrah but the whole entire world and so um, we know in Lot's time Abraham uh, lived and uh, you know was uh, still in a faraway place from Sodom and Gomorrah but was still around when it happened and so um, we can't say that there was only a few people um, saved in far as far as Sodom and Gomorrah, but there was only a few people saved outside of this this specific city, but it didn't affect the whole world. Um, and so I think the point in making this video is that, you know, is society getting to that place? I think we're very, very close, you know. Um, I think we have to ask ourselves the question of, you know, is this the way that society living, is this comparable to a time where God would destroy the whole world? And, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, also, you know, a God who the God of the Bible is merciful, is compassionate, is loving you know, he sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins. And he's offering forgiveness for anyone who will, who will take that forgiveness. And so, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what is the breaking point that God would say, you know, okay, that's it. That's enough. You know, we're going to enter into the tribulation. And so, you know, I can't say for sure if we are at, the breaking point of God where you know God himself would you know just be fed up with society um, but at the same time I think we could be getting closer to the rapture I watch uh, a, another guy's channel pretty regularly and um, his channel kind of showcases uh, you know different uh, evils that are happening in the world he showcases you know different uh news headlines that have uh any uh resemblance to what the bible describes what the end times will look like and so i like watching his channel and in his channel he consistently shows a lot of good evidence that the world is getting closer to um you know what i would say is the breaking point of God you know where God is saying okay you know that's it and so uh, his channel is called the watchman um, and um, you can find him on YouTube there's a few watchmen's on there um, he kind of has on his logo um, a guy blowing a chauffeur or a guy a guy blowing a trumpet made out of a goat goat horn and it's orange and so if you look for his logo an orange logo with a guy blowing a trumpet or a chauffeur a goat a goat's horn 
goat g o a t that's what i'm trying to say that may not come clear through the mic but um you can check out his channel uh sometimes i do you know not always recommend some of his videos because uh they can be a little bit strong as far as um you know really showing what evil is and one could possibly say that it sounds hateful or you know uh you know he's kind of bringing bringing down the bible on one particular group so um i wouldn't say that because i feel like you know he doesn't seem to be that type of person but just at the same time some of his videos can be a little bit strong so uh, there's my warning for that recommendation, but I still do recommend his channel for you to watch um, but anyway um, We are called to believe in Jesus all people everywhere are called to believe in Jesus because Jesus is the true God and it's true and God is faithful even if we are unfaithful and so meaning God is God irregardless of what we do and so he's calling all people to believe and so if you're watching this video and um, you want to believe in Jesus you know it doesn't matter what you have done and yeah you know that sounds like a big statement but it is true it doesn't matter, you know, if you have done some grievous sin or you have many sins or you feel as if you cannot be saved or you feel as if God doesn't want anything to do with you or you just feel as if you're a sinner going to hell and you just don't care about life. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you have done that God is still willing to save you because it's already written down in scripture and there's no other um, verse in the Bible that would describe God not willing to be to save you and so um, you know I can transition into just saying how you know if you have a need to come to Jesus which if you don't know Jesus, then you do have a need to come to Jesus and you can today, you can become a child of God because you don't have to let your past determine, you know, your future and God is willing to, um, forgive you of your sins, even though there still may be consequences to our sins. You know, I know after a while I realized that hey you know you you do uh, sometimes have to face the consequences of your sins but at the same time God is willing to pardon you and you know he's willing to offer you forgiveness you know even though he knows hey he knows that what you have done is bad you know it's not necessarily God saying you know, OK, yeah, you know what you did wasn't that bad. He knows and, you know, but at the same time, God is saying that, you know, he doesn't he's not willing for you to go to hell for all eternity for what you did. You know, he's saying that you can, you know, escape if you want to and you can come to Jesus Christ and, you know, be a be a child of God and you know you don't have to count yourself out from eternal life just because you feel like Jesus isn't for you or maybe you feel like you know um, you want to live a certain lifestyle well um, I will say that you know sin only satisfies for a little bit but after a while you will need more to your life and um, I think that 
what when Jesus is saying let go of your sins you know I think that it's worth it you know you may not think that it's worth it because um you feel as if you know um you like what you're doing you know but I would say that it is worth it to give up your sins and not pay for your sins even though you may think that you don't care and you want to pay for your sins you know it doesn't have to be that way and that it's worth it to give up your sins and turn to Jesus because you can have eternal life and you can live with God you can see God all your questions that you may have about God can be answered in eternity you know maybe not just in the 50 60 20 you know years that you may have left on this earth but you know God can answer our questions and so um, life is going to get better even though in the 50 60 20 you know 100 years I, I don't know if anyone watching this you know has a hundred years left but you know uh, it doesn't matter you know that Jesus is able to save us and he's willing to do so and so um, if you would like to come to Jesus today and you know let go of your past and start new start fresh you can repeat after me and pray this prayer and begin your journey you can begin your journey of walking towards heaven towards the better city that is coming there's a better life that is coming that you know um life can sometimes feel hard it can feel like it's not worth living you know but God knows that he understands that and you know he's saying that he's gonna make things better you know and that he's going to turn this this the bad parts of life around and so he's only asking that you give up your sins he's asking for you to believe in Jesus he's asking for you to trust him that he can give you the power to give up your sins he can give you the power to live a new life if you continue walking with him and so um you know jesus said in the book of romans it was through paul he said um that whoever calls on the name of the lord will be saved and so um you know the plan of salvation is simple that even though walking with God can be hard but the whole idea of getting saved is a simple concept that Jesus said whoever believes will be saved and whoever will not believe will be condemned and so um if you would like to call on the name of the Lord, you can repeat this prayer after me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I don't know what to do, God, but I'm asking you to show me the way to eternal life. Jesus, I need you to save me. Please forgive me of my sins. Please accept me as a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so this prayer is not necessarily a magic prayer or a, a special, um, you know, entrance into heaven. This prayer is you calling on the name of the Lord and with my prompting or with another person's prompting you know it's just a technique to help you call on the name of the lord and the bible says when you do that you are saved you will be saved because doing that says that you believe in jesus 
and so continue to believe in Jesus. I recommend getting baptized um, and getting baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And um, you start turning over a new leaf that your life doesn't have to be a string of mistakes, a string of disappointments, a string of, you know, bad decisions. God can help you make good decisions and God can help you get on the journey to eternal life that it's really the word life has so much more to it than just existing. It means really living and living for Jesus. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Um, you know, I just want to circle back here. Is it like Sodom and Gomorrah? You know, I think we're getting close as a summary of this video. You know, I wanted to just say that, yeah, I think I think we're getting closer to what Sodom and Gomorrah look like. And um, I think God is going to start searching, you know, in some years for people who have faith, you know, who who believe and it could be our generation that sees the rapture maybe it isn't um no one knows the day or the hour so that's why there's a maybe to it but i think we can um also take a look and see you know are people paying attention to god or people falling away from god and not wanting anything to do with him and not wanting to believe that there is a God and that he's revealed himself through Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, you know, we're getting closer each day. So thanks so much for checking out this video. And I will talk to you on the next video. See ya.